Uh, uh. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new JPEG Mafia album, All My Heroes Are Cornballs. This is a new album from producer, rapper, singer, songwriter, Mr. JPEG Mafia, who suddenly became an overnight sensation in the hip-hop underground shortly after the release of his album last year, veteran. I've been aware of Peggy's stuff for a while. I took the time in 2016 to celebrate his incredibly confrontational single with Freaky, I Might Vote for Donald Trump, which was one of my favorite songs of the year, and also early works of his, like Black Ben Carson, I thought certainly had a lot of untapped potential. Potential that was fulfilled on veteran, which is still an incredibly radical fucking record. Uncompromising, challenging, aggressive, and yet so deeply in tune with much of what makes mainstream hip-hop as appealing as it is, constantly borrowing from it, whether it be with a bit of uh, an accessible flow or rhythm, and then subverting it on a track like 1539 North. Calvert, Thug Tears, Macaulay Culkin, as well as, who can forget, I cannot fucking wait until Morrissey dies. Simply labeling JPEG Mafia as abstract or experimental or even industrial hip hop it doesn't really give you much of a picture of anything that he does. Especially considering his consistently edgy, political, and in-your-face lyrical content, as well as how disorienting and unpredictable the flows of his projects tend to be. It's like it's all functioning on a gigantic, very unhealthy mood swing. So, going into this new Peggy project, I hoped it would be out there. I thought it would be, especially given the vibe of the teaser tracks. More or less, I expected the Peg Man to stick to his guns and continue delivering those esoteric slaps. I didn't necessarily foresee him doing more singing on this record, though bringing in a bit more influence from the worlds of pop and R&B, especially as he goes on his own melodic interpretation of TLC's No Scrubs during one of the interlude cuts here. Even though he didn't do a whole ton of it on Veteran, Peggy singing on his own songs is nothing new, but it's really the emotion, the vibe, the mood of this record that feels different and unique from every other project Peggy has dropped up until this point. And for some reason, this has made Cornballs, at least for me, a bit more difficult to sum up than Veteran. It's not nearly as obvious or as straightforward as Veteran was, and that record was already pretty impressionist in nature, constantly changing, but still greater than the sum of its loosely associated parts. The increase in moody synthetics and tuneful singing and vapor wavy textures and sound palettes has led to an experience that is a lot mellower and even more depressive than any JPEG project up until this point. Which is not necessarily a bad thing because I think Peggy shows a knack for writing these alt-rap dirges, if you could call them that. And there are some pretty key and alien synth passages on PTSD, on beta male strategies, on the end of the Dots freestyle, as well as grimy waifu that sound like they are straight out of a vapor wave album. Taking all of these changes in, I'm not surprised that Peggy would semi-ironically promote this record, telling fans they're going to be disappointed with it. Because I think Cornballs does ask a lot more from fans than Veteran did. I'm not even sure if I'm crazy about everything going on on this LP, but I guess I'm happy Peggy didn't make the same record all over again. But there were quite a few songs in the track list that for me felt very unkempt, low impact, didn't really build up much in the way of momentum or theme or central idea across their runtime, especially toward the end of the project, like the Dots freestyle, which I think kicks off well enough. Low-key beat, smooth flows, witty rhymes, but just starts trailing off in a really unsatisfactory way after the guest vocal comes in, and then again we transition into that weird vapor wavy passage that, while I don't mind it in theory, it just feels really tacked on. The post-verified lifestyle has a lot of admirable parts to it, but the disjointed structure of it all makes me wonder what exactly this track is trying to be. Is it an instrumental with what sounds like found sound effects? Is it a weird vocal snippet or skit? It's just like I'm being kind constantly shifted back and forth between listening to a snippet or rather just one-fifth of several different songs. Thought Tactics I thought had some good bars and a great vocal line from Peggy toward the end, but the very subdued and glitchy beat just felt like a hodgepodge, sort of weak foundation for the song and a giggly outro that just feels like one more distraction from the fact that a song here didn't really have a strong ending. And while I am complaining, I guess I'll point out the track 
Life's Hard, Here's a Song About Sorrel, which is excruciating. Not only does the instrumental feel like a One of Tricks Point Never replica ripoff, but the purposefully horrendous strained auto-tune singing thrown on top of that is just a very difficult listen. Thankfully, there are many more positives than negatives throughout the track list on this thing, especially on the more tuneful cuts here. The opening track, Jesus Forgive Me, I Am a Thought. You better count your blessings for real. I love the glossy and distant keys on this track, and, and the bass is heavy as hell. Peggy delivering all of these coarse and dark-humored bars, many of which seem to center around his creative process. It may in fact be a comment on his popularity and him operating within the music industry in the state that he does. There are standout lines on this thing like, I hope these crackers don't columbine, as well as addressing his odd fashion sense, talking about how he's wearing your grandma's hand-me-downs, which also reminds me of the line where he is talking about keeping his non-existent pussy closed on the hook. We also have a bar on the next track where he's quick to compare himself to Princess Peach, another song where he's quick to compare himself to Carly Rae Jepsen. I guess you could say that Peggy is kind of showing off his feminine side on this record, and in a good way, because he, he's looking gorgeous on the cover. The song Beta Male Strategies is also relatively low-key with these oddly grooved, airy, ethereal samples. Again, very vaporwave-ish. Lots of threatening lyrics throughout the bars being pointed at internet trolls. Say what you said on Twitter right now. Ugh. I love the track's distorted and strange chord transition around the midpoint of the song. Sounds really apocalyptic and almost Radiohead-ish. Then there's the song Grimy Waifu, which for one, transitions fantastically out of the previous interlude cut, JPEG Mafia type beat. A short song here that I think works in a few different layers. For one, the jittery, busy beat and pitched down screaming Atari Teenage Riot sampled vocals, together it all sounds a lot like Death Grips. I think JPEG Mafia may be in fact poking fun at tight beat culture on platforms like YouTube, as well as calling out the constant comparisons that he gets to acts like Death Grips, despite not really sounding all that much like them. But to get back to Grimy Waifu, I love the sparkly acoustic guitars on this track, the beautiful synth leads. Again, all very mellow, very pretty, but the lyrics detail a different <laughs> tone, a different mood, as this track is essentially a, a romantic-ish ode to Peggy's gun his weapon. That's my Grammy waifu. The lyrics throughout are pretty smart, very playful, very funny. The theme of this track is pretty significant given Peggy's background in the armed forces, which I think also plays into some of the themes and the title of the next track, PTSD, which has a very disorienting and strange sample-based tone-setting intro that eventually gives way to these mystical, ringing synth passages. Some plucky embellishments here and there, too. It sounds like something out of a tragic scene in a Japanese anime. And it's as these gorgeous melodies are cycling underneath that Peggy jumps on top, starts delivering these violent, threatening bars, talking shit like, y'all deals looking like Brexit, which is the funniest and most apt line about some rapper's record label deal that I think I've heard in a long time. The song Rap Grow Old and Die. No Child Left Behind is a cool little two-parter with these sweet buzzing chord progressions. It's kind of lo-fi, it's kind of blown out, and it is through this nastiness that Peggy is able to broadcast one of the most beautiful vocal melodies on the entire record, with him singing in this very robotic tone about being caught up in these vicious life cycles. I wish there were more tracks on this thing that were this tuneful and inspired this much lo-fi wonder. It's after the title track on this thing that I think the material starts to grow a little inconsistent and, again, low impact, kind of underwhelming. Sure, there are amazing highlights past this point, like the explosive prone, the title track is fantastic, and there's also the amazing and super catchy Free the Frail, which not only has one of the most melodic and stunning choruses on the entire record, but this song is maybe the most vulnerable that JPEG Mafia has been on a track so far. And it's mostly about his fame, his image, feeling like he's completely out of control of this whole situation. He's existing at the whims of the audience, essentially. I think what he communicates lyrically on the chorus of this track says so much. Don't rely on the strength of my image. If it's good, then it's good. Break it down, the shit is out of my hands. But again, quite a few tracks in the second half of this record, in my opinion, 
aren't terrible, but just so-so. And I barely scratched the surface of how many incredible one-liners there are from front to back on this thing, even when you're talking about tracks that maybe the instrumental or the structure leaves a bit to be desired. That one line about one shot turning Steve Bannon into Stephen Hawking? Oh my god. Also, better than me rather than you, I'm a Barry at right, trying to lead these neighbors to freedom, Peggy Harriet. Target practice on an Aryan, redneck tears, woo, what a beverage. Again, bars like these are on every corner of this album. Even though at this point I still have a hard time summing this record up, I mean surely it is experimental, it is abrasive, it is in your face, it is harmonious, it is beautiful, it is raw, it is vulnerable. It is everything that you have expected JPEG Mafia to be up until this point. Those glitches, that noise, that hip-hop influence, that trademark rap flow. But this time around, it's a bit glossier. It is more sterile, and in a way where it tries to become a bit more emotionally numb. It's more despondent. It's more depressive. And again, those weird, digital, very alien vaporwave influences are just bleeding into so many tracks here. I loved it. I'm impressed. I wouldn't say I like it as much as Veteran, though, which has grown on me significantly since the release of that record. But even though I'm liking this record slightly less than its predecessor, that is not to say that I don't enjoy the mood change this record brings. I do. And this dude is unquestionably still one of the most unique rapper producers out there operating right now. And he's saying shit that 99% of rappers don't even have half of a mind to say. This dude is still a young internet god producing the soundtrack for the despondent, late-stage capitalist age that we are all currently trapped in. Feeling a light eight on this one? Tran? Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video for you to check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, JPEG Mafia, forever.